Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So it seems like it was just like a week or so ago when Angie and I were sitting in this very room discussing Piers Morgan attacking vegans. Well, he's back at it again on a very recent episode of Good Morning Britain. He was attacking three young female vegan activists because he felt they were hypocrites because they ate bread. How many of you eat bread? <laughs> a serious question. Yeah, we all eat bread. You all eat bread. So you're aware that how bread gets made, right? Ladybirds, bugs, things, mice, rats, all these other little creatures that are in the crop, they get destroyed in the production of, of wheat crops, right? So that you guys can munch your bread. Oh, really, Piers Morgan, like you never munch bread. I find that really hard to believe. Perhaps you're being a bit of a hypocrite there. But more to the point, he used the same argument on this last episode that Angie and I did. He was trying to attack the vegan there for eating bread and never gave any proof, any evidence whatsoever about all this death and carnage that happens in bread making. We're just supposed to trust the word of Piers Morgan, the anti-vegan. Tell me the difference ideologically between me wanting a Christmas turkey and you guys eating bread, which you know involves the slaughter of millions of young critters. Oh, it's millions now. Last week you had a different figure, Piers. Billions of insects get murdered. Billions. Veganism is not about perfection. It's about doing the best that you can. If you look at animal agriculture, it is the single biggest cause of climate change, global warming, deforestation. By far, more animals are being hurt through animal agriculture. And what we're doing is we're doing our best. Great answer. Unlike in the previous episode, here this vegan gets to point out that nowhere in this very well accepted definition of veganism does it say that vegans must be perfect beings that cause absolutely no harm of any kind in any aspect of our lives. Piers is just, as many anti-vegans do, making up his own weird, bizarre definition of what vegan means. I mean, according to peers, vegans would never be able to drive a car. We might actually squash a bug or something. And walking might even be off limits. I might step on an ant or bug. So I don't know, maybe vegans could just sit on a chair and hope nothing bad happens. I appreciate the point where you're suggesting that the insects are being killed. But what we need to realize is the intent behind it. Nobody's intending to kill insects necessarily for us to eat bread. However, when you're eating a steak or whatever, the intent is very much there. You're deliberately killing that animal. No, but hang on. Yeah, great job there, calling Piers out on his nonsense. Piers likes to come off as, I'm so intelligent, I'm so educated, I know more than you do on any matter. And in this case, Piers is just full of crap making stuff up. He's saying it's morally equivalent that, like, say, unintentionally harming an insect is the same as intentionally raising billions of farm animals every year for slaughter, hanging them by their feet, slitting their throats, letting them bleed out. It's, it's the same. There's no difference. Vegans are hypocrites because they participate in harm as well, accidentally harming bugs. When I eat a steak, I know that the preparation of that steak involved the killing of an animal. When you eat your bread, right, you know, because you've all just admitted this, Nope, they never admitted that. I've watched this about a dozen times and Piers is making that up. Now, when you eat your bread, you know it involves the slaughter of animals. To me, there's absolutely no ideological difference between my decision making when I eat my steak and yours when you eat your bread. I want you to tell me the difference. Oh really, you see absolutely no ideological difference whatsoever between unintentionally harming an insect and intentionally slitting the throat of billions of cows needlessly. No difference whatsoever. I don't believe you. You're either lying or you're completely sick and demented. Hey. These little animals have been mown to pieces. Yeah. We wouldn't leave our house because every time we walk, you could be, for example, stepping on an ant. So that's I mean, the I problem with being a vegan. I could be sitting on an ant right now. Right. You know, right. Right. we can't. There's certain things you cannot help. A yeah, great job of calling Piers out on his BS once again. Piers has been fully exploiting the appeal to futility fallacy, which goes something like this. Piers is arguing, since there can be no such idea as zero harm, even vegans, as well meaning as we may be, are causing some harm to some creatures at some point. You know, unintentionally, but there's got to be some harm. So since we can't eliminate all harm on this planet, let's not even worry about it. Let's just intentionally kill billions of farm animals needlessly for food that we don't need to eat. Because, you know, 
people are unintentionally harming insects. But my point to you is your, your fury about all this does not extend morally to the little animals that get killed in the production of the bread you love to eat. So now it's little animals getting killed in bread production, not just insects getting harmed. So he's taking this from just the appeal to futility fallacy. He's using what I call the combine harvester argument, where anti-vegans argue that countless of small animals and even larger ones like deer are getting scooped up and killed in the harvest of the crops that grow food for not only vegans but for non-vegans as well well we've responded to this many times joe rogan isaac butterfield have used this so um instead of re um trying to state it here let me just play back what angie and i said a few months ago so this four-year study radio tracked and live trapped field mice to see what would happen to them after a combine harvester went through their field. And they found that the combine harvester had itself little direct effect on the mice. No decapitation, <laughs> no sucking, sucking up Sucking them up or nothing. Inevitably, as Isaac said. So both Joe and Isaac once again are engaged in fantasy. And there's other studies confirming this very same thing. In Indonesian rice fields, rats were radio collared mm -hmm. and measured, tracked during and after harvesting and found that the rats just didn't stand there during harvesting. They relocated to other safe areas. I mean, that makes sense. These are huge, noisy machines. They're going to be rumbling the ground and like rats know how to take care of themselves. They're known to be smart. Of course they would move out of the way. Animals want to survive just like yeah. humans do. And if you saw a large combine harvester coming at would you. Would Joe just stand there and get decapitated? <laughs> Is that what he would do? No. Nope. I don't <laughs> and think so. Same with the rats and field mice. So, so much for the combine harvester argument, but Pierce isn't done. He just keeps throwing crap out there to see what sticks. So now he's going to throw out the what happens in the jungle argument. What happens in the jungle? What in the jungle, that? animals eat other animals yes, to stay alive, jungle, right? We're not well, actually, we're doing the same <laughs> no. thing as animals do in a jungle. We are eating no. to survive. No. For all you students of logic, this is a classic example of the appeal to nature fallacy. A very common tactic, by the way, amongst anti-vegans. They love to argue, as Pierce does here, if some something happens naturally in this fantasy jungle of his. He argues that animals eat other animals in the jungle. Therefore, that justifies humans killing other animals for food. Okay, so what, ducks rape other ducks? So he's suggesting that's what we should do as well? Once again, great job of calling Piers out on his fallacy here. How ducks rape other ducks in nature. So according to Piers' line of reasoning, humans should rape other humans because that's what happens in nature. What happens in nature is right. It, it's moral. It justifies what we should do. And furthermore, Piers is being very selective on his what happens in the jungle argument. He's referring to like lions and tigers. Well, a vegan could use the appeal to nature fallacy as well. We could refer to an animal such as the rhino or elephant or giraffe, some of those badass animals in nature and how they don't kill and eat other animals. So we could argue how nature shows how we should all be vegans. Uh, not at all, so you can't compare animal behavior, every single aspect of animal behavior. In the jungle, Going animals eat market. other animals to survive, right? Yes, human beings eat survive. other animals to survive. This is not about our survival, because we can survive on a vegan so diet. Too. Great point, let me add to that. Not only can we just survive on a vegan diet, science has shown that humans actually thrive on a whole food, plant-based diet. And this whole concept of surviving in the wild, like uh, animal hunting, I mean, who amongst us who has access to the inner internet is surviving in the wild. We have, if you have access to the internet, you have access to food. You have access to grocery stores, supermarkets, and nothing prevents you from going there and buying plants. You don't need to go there and buy meat. It's super frustrating to watch peers time and time again throw out the same old boring arguments that I would love to come on his show. I'll fly over to Britain and debunk Piers and let me know what you think of Piers if you watch him in Great Britain. Is he respected there or is he just a, a nonsensical windbag as I see him here? So let me know your thoughts. Share down below. Like this video. Until next time, let's let the whole world know, including Piers, it doesn't suck being vegan.